Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. Just had to finish setting things up. Um, as you know, this is coming live from San Diego County in California. I had to find a good place to set my map today. It's a little bit different because I have a leaking roof next to me. We've been having quite a lot of rain here, so for people who don't believe it ever rains in SoCal, you are a little bit mistaken. In fact, a drip just came right past me. Um, let me just quickly grab a little towel. I'll be two seconds. joining in. I have a bit of a leaking roof. We're having a lot of rain here in San Diego County, which is uh, a little bit unusual for us. But um, these houses weren't really built to withstand the rain because we don't really get it. But we do have quite a bit of flooding on the golf course today. Wow. Okay, so... As you would have seen on the title, we're doing more of a gentle flow practice today. So be focusing a little bit more restorative, um, holding poses a little bit longer, that sort of thing. Let me just get up my notes here and then we shall begin. Again, sorry, I'm a little bit late coming in. We just have to sort some things out here. Okay, right, so we're going to start this practice today in Shavasana or Corpse Pose. You want to be lying down on your mat for this. The palms facing up, gently breathing. I'll tell you what, is the music on? See, want to make sure that we're good to go. Anyway, start to get your vasana, corpse pose, lying down. You can hear the sound of meditation music. If I can only get this rain a little bit louder, then maybe I could use the rain as my music today. Because it's very relaxing. Inhale, four counts. Hold for four counts. And we'll exhale for four counts. Do a couple more breaths like this on your own. Inhale, one, two, three, four, hold. Exhale, one, two, three. So we're going to do some neck twists while we're down here. So inhale, and exhale, move down to the left, two, three, four, hold, inhale, comes back up, and we're going to exhale down to the other side. Come back up.
So we're going to do another round of this. So inhale, and exhale, come down to the left. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, come back down to the other side. And come back up. Normal. Excellent. Brilliant. So now we're going to do a little pose called Banana Asana. And you can probably guess what that pose entails. So. All we're going to do is, I wonder, yeah, this should, this should show it, okay? So when we're in Shavasana, we're going to walk our feet over to the right, crossing our left ankle over our right. If that's where it is, that's, that's okay, you can do that. Or to make it like a proper banana, you can put your arms over your head, move over to the right with your left, and a hand gripping onto your right wrist. And we're just going to hold here for a few counts. This is going to be a bit more meditation. So think about everything you're grateful for. I heard in the UK that you have some sunshine at the moment, showing gratitude for the sun, giving you your vital vitamin D as you either sit outside your house or go for your little bit of exercise you can have. Or if you live in California, you can think about the gratitude towards rain because the rain will make all our plants and greenery a lot more lush and will also help us get out of this drought we are in. And also to be grateful for the safety of our homes while we shelter. When you're ready, you can start to unravel yourself, move yourself back to the center of the mat, uncrossing your left ankle, going back to the center, taking some more breaths in Shavasana. And when you're ready, you can begin to move to the left side of your mat. Crossing your right ankle over your left. If that's where you want to stay, you can stay here. Or if you want to, you can lift your arms up, move over to the left side of your mat, grabbing your right hand on your left wrist. Again, tapping into anything that we are grateful for. Enjoying the peace of this moment.
and only when you're ready, you begin to uncross your right hand over your left, releasing your right hand from your left, and coming slowly back into Shavasana, holding again for a few more breaths. So now we're going to lift our left leg up. You can either grip just behind the hamstring or you can grip a little bit lower. The idea is to just stretch our hamstring as much as we can. As you can see, I have, I have my leg bent. You, you having your leg bent is going to be very normal as well. This is the first proper stretch of the hamstring this morning. So we're not going to expect straight hamstrings. Be sure you keep your head down and your shoulders down onto the mat, relaxing it. And what we're going to do is we're going to move our ankle a little bit, forward, back, left, right, forward, back, left, right, while we try and get a nice stretch on the hamstring. It's better to have the hamstring a little bit higher where your shoulder can be down while bent rather than forward. We can't really reach but straight. So just moving our ankles. Getting a nice deep stretch on our hamstring. These are one of the muscles that we neglect the most. Also, you can keep your right leg straight or if you prefer, you can bend it if it's a little bit easier on you. Then bending your knee will make it a little bit easier, but you want to get to a very deep stretch, you want to try and keep your leg on the ground and straight. When you're ready, you can slowly lower your left leg down. Switching over to our right, we're gonna lift this up, grab it behind the hamstring, either with our bent left knee or keeping it straight down and just holding it here. As you can notice, I have very, very tight hamstrings. That comes from years of training without accounting for flexibility. It was only when I really got into yoga that I realized how important flexibility really is. So now we're just gonna slowly move our ankles left and right, forward and back. It's not the most comfortable pose, but it is very important for the hamstrings. You can make little circles with your ankle maybe as well if you want to. Only when you're ready, you can begin to slowly lower your right leg back down, back into Shavasana. So I'm going to tuck our left knee in and our right knee and we're going to slowly roll in any direction you want to, rolling out the back, the lower back that is. And when you change your breath, you change your direction of the way that you're rolling. And you have two ways to get out of this. You can either do the more traditional way you've been doing it, and you can fall on the side of your choice and pick yourself up. 
or do you have a little bit more energy, you can rock back and forward, back and forward, up into a seated position. Don't forget to drink as well while we're up here. So now we're just going to do some seated cat cows. We're going to put our hands over our knees. We're going to inhale, pick our chest up, lift our head up. Keeping our shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, round. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, round. We'll do that a few more times. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Do one more of that. Inhale. And exhale. So now we're going to inhale. Arms come above our head. And exhale, we're going to put our left hand behind us. We've got our right hand over our leg. And we're going to just twist. Make sure we twist our spine first with our neck following. Seeing how far we go without pushing ourselves too much. away from the ears as much as we can. So we're going to inhale, arms come back up. This time we're going to exhale, cactus arms. Stretching out our shoulder blades, muscles, or the deltoids and also oh my god I forgot what that muscle was called your upper trapezius and then we're going to inhale arms come back up we do another round exhale looking back behind us you may find that you can go even further this time around because we're stretching out our spine. head, exhale, hands to heart center. So now we're going to do a bit of an arm stretch, with our right coming over our left, our left coming across us, and 
is gonna hold here. Remember it, breathe. Then come out and do the other side. This time we're going to switch up the way our legs are crossed. So if you got your right over left, we're just going to switch it around. It's going to feel very weird, but it's good to switch it up. I'm just going to do the same arm stretch again as we're all switched up. Enjoying the bliss. And we're gonna put our leg hands back onto our knees. So now we're gonna switch up to do our normal cat cows. Um, I'm going to have to keep my mat a little bit more this way today because of the leak going on right next to me. <laughs> Sadly, we do have a, quite a lot of rain here, but it's good for the plants. California is normally a bit of a desert, particularly in the south. So we're going to have a nice little bit more green. So we're going to get into our tabletop position. Remember, shoulders stack over wrist, and our hips stack over our knees. And we're going to do just some regular cat cows. So inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Do one more. Inhale and exhale. So now we're gonna pick ourselves up into more of a push up position. And if it's here today, you can just stay here or you can lift your right leg up. With your right, lower your left hand up, and we can come in and we can crunch. This is not a great angle, is it? Okay. Uh, I think the key is calm down a bit, so maybe I can change it up. Push up position, and you can crunch in and back out. Do that two more times. It's quite hard to maintain your balance. And then we're going to switch it up to the other side. So right arm in, left leg crunch, come back out. And another two more times. So I'm going to crunch in and back out. <laughs> One more time. Crunch in and back out. Bit of an ab workout for you. So, 
From here, we're just gonna fall into child's pose. Remain in child's pose. And when you're ready, we're going to slowly unravel out, get into another push-up position. Just going to lower ourselves all the way down onto our mat. Yeah, you still see me. Then you do something called Sphinx Pose. And you put your forearms down with your palms flat and you're just gonna fall to yourself like this. It's more of a restorative motion, slight back bend in the lower back. to breathe. It's a very, very gentle pose. back up and come back into a child's pose. When you're ready, you can come back up. Get back into a push-up position. And we're gonna push ourselves back for downward facing dog. Pedaling out our ankles, making sure we engage the core and we focus more on the on the straight back rather than how let how straight our legs are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick our right leg up, put it in front of between our hands into a low lunge. So you can have your knee on the ground 
or you could tuck your toes under for a bit more of a challenge, but actually no, let's just stick our knees down, it'll be a little bit easier today. So we just want to make sure that our knees are level and not stacked over the toes. Then all we're going to do from here is put our palms together, rest our right elbow on our right knee, and we're just going to twist and look up to the sky. You may find that balance is a little bit awkward, but even if you do lose your balance, just shower yourself with positivity. toes under, lift your right leg back, lift it up and back down into downward facing dog. If you're finding that you have a lot of energy today, you can do a full Vera cycle, which I will go with you with you now. If you prefer, you can just stay in downward dog, but this is for people who have high energy today. So. Now you can go back into a push-up position, put yourself all the way down to Chaturanga, tuck your toe, untuck your toe, sorry, lift yourself up for upward facing dog, and then meet everyone back at downward facing dog. This time we're going to lift our leg up in the air, and we're going to put it between our hands, right knee down for a low lunge. We're going to put hands at heart center, palms together, left elbow on left knee, and we're just going to twist and look up to the sky. back, lift yourself back up into downward facing dog, and if you have high energy, you can go through the Vera cycle again, if you're low energy, just drop to your knees and go into a child's pose, and I'll go through the Vera cycle again for people with high energy. So, if you want to do full Vera, we're in downward facing dog, we're going to come back to a push-up position. Down into Chaturanga, untuck the toes for upward facing dog, then lift ourselves back up for downward facing dog. And now we're going to meet everyone back in child's pose, so we're going to put our knees down and come back to child's pose. When you're ready, you can come back up to a tabletop position, lean onto the left of our sit bones, and come back and sit. Crisscross applesauce, as one of my yoga instructors have said to me before. So I'm just going to sit in this position. And then we're going to move 
try to keep our legs straight in front of us for staff pose. This is challenging, particularly have very tight hamstrings and tight calves. So the aim is to have a straight back. If you struggle to get that straight back, you can either go to your mat, roll it up a little bit, and you can sit on it like that to try and improve your posture. Or if you've got a pillow or a cushion handy, you can also use this. Okay. So we're gonna try and sit, sit. If you need to bend your knees a bit um, to compensate and have a straight back. And then you can do that. Or if you've got the flexibility and you can maintain the straight back, you can straighten your legs out. For me, I will have to slightly bend my knees because I do have very tight hamstrings. And you don't want to compromise your straight back for the sake of straight legs. Your back is so important. I'm just gonna sit like this for a little bit. Maybe once you're getting that nice stretch, you can stretch your legs out a little bit more. As long as we maintain the correct alignment on our backs. And then when you're ready, we're gonna come back to a seat position, taking our prop off to the side and if you have your mat rolled up you should unroll it now. So for the peak this is going to be a little bit of a challenging pose but it is called Half Lord of the Fish. And we're going to have our left knee bent, right leg as straight as possible. Inhale, get that back alignment. We're going to put our right elbow on our left knee and we're just going to put our left hand back and we're going to twist into the pose. I find this pose particularly challenging because I don't have the flexibility in my right knee and I'm quite new to teaching. So trying to teach this pose is a little bit tricky, but it's a learning process together. Make sure we inhale, engage our core to get nice straight alignment on our back. And when you're ready, we're going to untuck ourselves, straighten our left leg, bending our right, and we're going to do the same to the other side. So inhale, arms come back up, exhale, right hand comes behind us, left arm on our right knee, and we're just going to twist, start with our spine, followed by our neck. ourselves, we can sit, actually we're going to sit towards the top of our mats and we're going to slowly roll ourselves down, tucking our left knee in and the right and we're just going to circulate around, rolling up the spine, we've done quite a lot of twisting motions today, 
So it's good to massage the back. Whenever you change your breath, you can change direction as well. Now we're going to set up for happy baby. So we're going to take our leg up, grab an eyebrow of feet or our ankles, and we're just going to roll side to side, stretch your out our hip flexors, and also rolling out our back a little bit more, creating a smile where you can. This is happy baby, not sad baby. And now you can come into any other asana you want to, any other pose. And then you can meet us down in Shavasana. We're going to have our legs shoulder width apart, palms facing up so that we're receptive, surrendering to the weight of our mat, and we're gonna slowly close our eyes. Thinking about everything we're grateful for, So as we're now settled into our Shavasana practice, we're just going to read you another quote from Thich Nhat Han, who is one of the, probably one of the most mindful yogis out there. And he says, we really have to understand the people we want to love. If our love is only a will to possess, it is not love. If we only think of ourselves, if we know only our own needs, ignore the needs of the other person, we cannot love. We must look deeply in order to see the understanding, the needs, aspirations, and suffering of the person we love. This is the ground of real love. You cannot resist loving another person when you really understand him or her. From time to time, sit close to the one you love, hold his or her hand, and ask, Darling, do I understand you enough, or am I making you suffer? Please tell me that I can learn to love you properly. 
I don't want to make you suffer, and if I do so because of my ignorance, please tell me so I can love you better, so that you can be happy. If you say this in a voice that communicates your real openness to understand, the other person may cry. That is a good sign because it means the door of understanding is opening and everything will be possible today. Uh, again. Maybe a father does not have time or is not brave enough to ask his son such a question. Then the love between them will never be as full as it could be. We need courage to ask these questions. But if we don't ask, the more we love, the more we destroy the people we are trying to love. True love means understanding. With understanding, the, the one we love will certainly flower. So now we're going to slowly bring awareness back to the room. With your eyes still closed, imagine the room around you. And to gently bring the awareness back, we're going to slowly wiggle our fingers and our toes, maybe rocking our heads side to side. And only when you're ready, you can tuck one knee in then the other and fall to the side of your choice in a fetal position taking this time for yourself and when you're ready you can slowly lift yourself up back into a seated position Arms come above head, exhale, hands to heart center. Thank you for letting me share your yoga journey with you. The light in me honors the light that is in each and every one of you. Namaste. Okay, thank you so much guys. Sorry about Wednesday. As I said, I wasn't feeling well. So I couldn't teach, but the good news is now I'm going to switch the times to Monday and Friday, which means there'll never be a very long period of time when there won't be a yoga practice. And Fridays are probably better in the long term anyway than a Wednesday. So Monday is going to stay exactly the same, but now I will change it on my Facebook page and I will share it a little bit better. I've, been, I've not been as engaging on Facebook. So I will be sure to share that information with you. Um, in regards to YouTube, I'm still having some issues. Um, not quite sure what's going on there, but that's gonna be my project this weekend. But as soon as everything is sorted out on that platform, the YouTube videos will typically come out a day after the live stream. Um, so if you're watching from YouTube, hello. <laughs> but um, this obviously will be available immediately after the live stream ends. You can rewatch this as many times as you want. In fact, you can go back to my older live streams as well. So you're more than welcome to rewatch the older live streams if you want to practice in between the next live stream. Um, these practices are good forever, really. So you can always find them and you can always practice them absolutely free of charge. So if you enjoyed the stream, be sure to like it. And put in the comments section um, the, your favorite pose, what pose you want to see in the future, and potentially any other feedback that you might have for me personally as a yoga instructor. 